module eight frag for for frag it is second module as we learned previously about the hibernation estivation and uh, camouflage and now the scientific name of the frag rana tigrina we say it as rana tigrina rana tigrina frag belongs to the phylum we start from kingdom frag belongs to the kingdom Animalia. 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 Sub kingdom? Umetazoa. Umetazoa. Yeah. Sub kingdom? Umetazoa. Let's start from there. Kingdom? Animalia. Animalia. Sub kingdom? Umetazoa. Sub kingdom? Umetazoa. Next. Great. Bilateria. Bilateria. Triploblastica. Triploblastica. Yeah. Great. Bilateria or Triploblastica. Frag belongs to the grade Bilateria or Triploblastica. So that means what kind of uh, symmetry can be expected here then? Bilateral, Bilateral symmetry. symmetry. Bilateral symmetry. Number of germ layers? Three germ layers. Type of organization? Yes. Organ system grade of organization. Grade of organization. Division? Deuterostomia. So, fate of last four will be? Anus. Anus. Type of cleavage? Indeterminate. Radial. Indeterminate type of cleavage. Type of embryo? Regulative, Regulative embryo. Regulative embryo. Subdivision? Enterocelometer. So, then the body cavity? Type of body cavity? True body cavity. Body cavity. Formed from the pouches of Argentina. Okay, so this is kingdom Animalia, subkingdom Eumetazoa, grade Bilateria or Triploblastica, division Deuterostomia, subdivision Enterocelometa, phylum. Cardata. 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 Phylum Cardata. Subphylum. You have three options. Vertebrata. Very good. Eurocardata, Cephalocardata. Vertebrata. So, subphylum vertebrata. Superclass. Nathostoma. Nathostomata. Right. You have two options. Aneta, Nathostomata. We should select Nathostomata. Superclass, Nathostomata. So, this is the complete hierarchy. Kingdom Animalia, subkingdom Eumetazoa, grade Bilateria or Triploblastica, division Deuterostomia. Subdivision Enterocelometa, Phylum Cardata, Subphylum Vertebrata, and Superclass Nathostomata, then Class. Class, class it belongs to? Amphibia. 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 Order. Anura. Anura or Selentia, we can say. Order Anura or Selentia. The family. Family, it belongs to Ranidae. Frags and toads are belongs to Ranidae. Family, Ranidae. Genus, Rana. Species, Tigrina. We can say. Genus, Rana. And species, Tigrina. So that means we need to continue here. Genus, Rana. And species, Tigrina. This is a complete hierarchy. Rana and species. Tigrina. Rana Tigrina. Okay. So that's it. Kingdom Animalia, Subkingdom Eumetazoa, Great Bilateria, Division the Deuterostomia, Subdivision Enterocelometa, Phylum Cardata, Subphylum Vertebrata, and Superclass Nathostomata, Superclass Nathostomata, and Class Amphibia, Order Anura or Selentia, Family Ranidae, Genus Rana, Species Tigrina. This is a complete picture of the frag. And uh, let's continue. Let's continue. The skin of frag. The skin of frag. The body shape of the frag is spindle shaped and slightly flattened dorsoventrally. And skin. Skin is thin. Scaleless, moist, thin, scaleless, moist skin, also used for respiration. 
we call it as a cutaneous respiration so it is attached loosely to the underlying muscle skin is attached loosely to the underlying muscle at certain points only the skin on the dorsal surface olive green with irregular dark spots the skin on the dorsal surface olive green with irregular dark spots the ventral surface the skin is uniformly pale yellow the ventral surface of the skin is uniformly pale yellow the dorsal surface olive green with irregular dark spots then frog never drinks water the very interesting thing here the frog never drinks water but absorbs it through the skin it never drinks the water but absorbs it through the skin necessary required water it absorbs through the skin so the body division should go with body division the body division of the frog that uh, neck and tail are absent the body is divisible into head and uh, trunk the head it is and then uh, the trunk head and trunk neck is not there and tail is also absent so that is trunk okay so this is head and the remaining body we can say trunk so above the snout here you see in the diagram above the snout that is now a pair of external nostril surfacing see the nostril a pair of external nostrils a pair of external nostrils are present above the snout okay so that area i'm pointing out once again so this area snout region and there we'll find the nostrils next about the eyes pair of eyes are present and they are bulged the eyes are bulged and covered by a nictitating membrane that protects them while in water a transparent membrane which covers the eye we say nictitating membrane which protects them while the frog is in water behind each eye the membranous tympanum ear drum behind each eye a membranous tympanum we call ear drum let's see that in the diagram so ear drum to show the difference to show the difference i am making here where does the tympanum present in human being so i am just showing here i shown for so many times but let's make it uh, with when comparing the frog we should say again this is external ear pinna pinna okay so then after we'll find external auditory meters which opens into the external auditory canal so when you go inside when we go inside in the here we'll find tympanum so this tympanum is much inner in case of human being okay this is the pinna and this is external auditory tube or canal so when uh, that receiving the both are having same function that both receive the ear vibration so then after the rotate malleus incus and stapes that is middle ear okay this is external ear okay so the this is tympanum this tympanum is present outside and now you see here this tympanum is present outside in the frog okay so that's the difference between the frog and why are learning frog why, why we learn earthworm then why we are going with cockroach earthworm cockroach frog human that means in the four milestones how does the development is happen type study based we are learning actually these particular four earlier times Uh, why the why only earthworm is selected why only cockroach is selected frog is selected and uh, uh, why there we have a specific reason that uh, for type study what is type study complete learning we say type study earthworm cockroach and frog and human so these are the uh, issues here uh, leave human why we are learning these three earthworm cockroach frog to compare with the human to compare with human we are learning and why we selected only these animals these are frequently available that uh, we can dissect them we can watch them whatever we learned in the theory we can watch them in practical in that way they selected it were the very easily available earthworm cockroach and frog 
are easily available. So that's why we learn earthworm, cockroach, and frog. Then after we dissect them and we open them, uh, that uh, after that we have to watch whatever the uh, issues we learn that uh, practically we can see. That's why they selected earthworm, cockroach, frog. But recent times from last two, three years, uh, we don't have any dissection. We are not killing animals. The earlier time, some 10 uh, years back, when we are in the intermediate, we used to cut the three years from cockroach and frog. Population increasing, student number is increasing, but uh, with the human activities, these animals are decreasing. And uh, just for learning, killing these animals, uh, feeling so sad, that's why uh, that we are not having these practicals at present. At present, we don't have these practicals, but just we are learning. That learning is continued, but the killing them and opening them is now it was prohibited by the government. No dissections we have. No dissections in examination. Okay, then let's come with the four limbs. Four limbs that uh, four legs and hind legs, we say. Four limbs and hind limbs. The two pairs of uh, four limbs and uh, the one pair of four limbs and one pair of hind limbs are present. If you observe, the four limbs are smaller, isn't it? Hind limbs are longer. So that is actually the, for uh, leaping, jumping type of locomotion. This will be helpful not to get damage to the limbs. Four limbs will be smaller and hind limbs will be longer. So that limbs are helpful for in swimming, walking, leaping and burrowing. The hind limbs bear five digits each. Hind limbs bear five digits each. So they are larger and more muscular than the four limbs, which bear four digits. In general, five digits. Digits, what I mean, I have to say. So if I ask you how many digits you have in the four limbs, we say five. In hind limbs, that means in the legs. We say five. That we are talking about. That digits we are talking about. Fingers in our words. Okay. So uh, this the story of uh, the limbs here. That the hind limbs are larger and more muscular than the four limbs, which bear four digits each. Here we are talking about four digits are present. Okay. So let me take the green itself to show the four digits each. The four limbs are having. Five digits. Okay, okay. We got a small mistake, I think. So here, the four limbs are bare five digits each, and the hind limbs bear the four digits each, and four hind limbs are larger than four limbs. The feet have web digits. Now let us see what is web digits. These are the digits we said five or four, whatever. So in between the particular digits, we'll find some web. So that what do you say? web digits. The fingers are united with the help of small thin membrane. We say that digits as web digits. That will be helpful for uh, swimming. Web feed. You can see here that web. If you observe closely, you can see the web here. So the web helps in uh, swimming. So there you can see the web. And now let's move on. To the characteristic features of the frog, the male and the female, that means unisexual. Sexual dimorphism is present. They exhibit the sexual dimorphism. So how does we recognize that which one is male and which one is female? The distinguished by the presence of sound amplifying vocal sacs. Vocal sacs are present in the male. Okay, so if vocal sacs are present, that is male. If vocal sacs are absent, that is female, you have to recognize. And one more distinguishing feature in case of male, that is copulatory pad. The copulatory pad on the first digit of each four limb, the copulatory pad on the each first digit of the four limb will find a copulatory pad. So that with the amplifying vocal sacs and copulatory pads, we can recognize that as a male. So the copulatory pads and uh, are absent in case of female copulatory pads and amplifying vocal sacs. Both are absent in female. Okay, then about the psyllium and viscera, body cavity. 
the body cavity a siloam of rag accommodates different internal organ we called it as enterosilom because it belongs to the subdivision enterosilometa rag accommodate that uh, internal organs or viscera in the body cavity so they are covered by visceral peritoneum yeah true siloam that's why definitely they'll cover by visceral peritoneum so true body cavity we can say so let's take a look what we learned here the male frog consists of this is very very important and regular question from this uh, frog vocal sacs hey vocal sacs okay very good vocal sacs vocal sacs is the answer tympanum receive sound waves sound waves very. Tympanum are the hearing organs. Definitely, they receive sound waves. Okay, so that's it about module two. In case of frog, here we learn the external features of the organism. 